Okay, the last bill, House Bill 622HD1, relating to evidence, this is more commonly known as the, the, the news media privilege or the, the shield. Uh, the recommendation of the, of the chair is to take into account the recommendations of the Attorney General's Office, the recommendations of the American Civil Liberties Union, and the recommendations of the Judiciary uh, Committee on Rules of Evidence. Any discussion? And the date is good. Any discussion? I'd like to mention my preference, as you know, is yep. to not have, any, <clears throat> not have any amendments and just have, just repeal the, um, the sunset date. Okay, any further discussion? Senator Sloan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I support that, uh, as I said the other day, and this, we had testimony and we've had no abuses of this law. The law has worked well. It's a model for laws in, in other states. Um, we've had more than five years. We've had studies about the bill. Uh, I think the easiest thing to do would be to pass the bill uh, as it was, and just removing the sunset date. So I would support that. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. As you might imagine, we've done a lot of work on this. So I, want, I will pass for your information instances where what the, what is presumed to be accurate by the media Derek this is yours <laughs> may not always be portrayed <laughs> as accuracy notwithstanding the fact that a media shield was not in place in more I would also point out that uh, the federal government does not have in place a media shield although it does have uh, has established at its circuit courts a common law that has been reversed by the United States Supreme Court. And finally, we'd point out that uh, 32 states have statutory uh, uh, language uh, 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 that uh, have, in fact, statutorily constructed a media shield, and the balance of, I think it's 17 states have established uh, a media shield through common law. Um, knowing this, uh, we had the benefit of the assistance of the American Civil, Li Civil Liberties Union to provide us and provide the Attorney General's Office with a state-by-state -state, um, uh, compilation of the elements of their shields. Uh, we looked at the uh, Judiciary Committee on Rules of Evidence recommendation we looked at the Attorney General's recommendations and the ACLU's recommendations. This, uh, the statement that there have been no problems is technically accurate, but there has been only one case in five years, and that case involved a documentarian who was represented by the ACLU uh, who used the media shield in not disclosing the documentarians source or sources. The problem becomes that the documentarian's product is assumed to be accurate and that may not be necessarily so. I've given you one example of a documentarian's inaccuracy, a journalist's inaccuracy. I pass out to you for your information another example of a, this is just Derek, an example of a news journalist one year before the media shield was constructed who readily admits an erroneous report of a rancher's death. So I believe we can argue on the efficacy of the shield, we can argue the efficacy of so-called journalists, we can argue the efficacy of the product. What is clear to me, and I've tried to take into account the advice of the judiciary, the advice of the attorney general, and the advice of the American Civil Liberties Union, and have come up with a, what I believe to be a balanced approach that uh, 
among, among other things, defines the terms of a journalist or newscaster, defines the terms of a magazine, a news agency, a newspaper, a press association, and a wire service. I, 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 it was the intent of the co committee chair to make clear that the assertion of the privilege given under this shield law in regards to those who were previously employed as a journalist or newscaster shall extend only to the information obtained during the previous period of employment and not after. Um, we put a lot of work in this and the, as I said earlier, the intent was to put something together where the judge would be able to, to the best of our ability at this time, be able to uh, determine whether the individual or company indeed met the standards required. As I said earlier, there was only, there's only been one case, so I'm not sure anybody could make a compelling argument on clarifying and defining the elements of the so-called journalist. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Further discussion. Thank Senator you, Mr. Chair. Chair. Uh, with all due respect, um, the copy that you sent us or showed us here it was 1948 uh, when the Chicago Daily Tribune had the uh, famous misheadline of Dewey defeating Truman. Uh, and the other story that you handed out here, KITV, uh, erroneously reporting the death of a, a prominent person. Um, I think that the testimony had shown that that's not what the Journalism Shield Bill is all about. It's about the ability uh, for journalists to report particularly controversial and, and corruption government stories in Hawaii. Uh, that was the main thrust of it. Right. The second item was that uh, organizations and individuals representing 22 different uh, news gathering organizations all supported the bill as it was with simply the removal of the sunset uh, provision. And thirdly, um, we have moved into an era of electronic journalism and uh, different choices. And clearly, the shield bill is meant to provide uh, some semblance of protection for those journalists to get those kinds of stories out. So I would again uh, support Senator Ihara's e. uh, call to go back to the original bill with the original yeah. change. Let me, let me respond this way. Uh, this bill does provide, quote, some semblance of protection <clears throat> to bona fide journalists, in my opinion, in the opinion of the ACLU in the opinion of the Attorney General, and in the opinion of the Judiciary's Committee on Rules of Evidence. The fact that 22 news organizations would like to go to back to the original version isn't surprising, shouldn't surprise anyone. The idea that De Dewey defeats Truman was not intended to, to portray anything other than the fact that people make errors, and that's it. Wasn't meant to color the uh, journalist, but to say errors occur. And errors occur, and uh, this is a, a, a perfect example. In the case of national defense, the most, ex the most recent, well, one of the most recent examples, it was ruled on by the United, Supreme, United States Supreme Court in Brandsburg v. Hayes. And it was the Brandsburg V. Hayes had two elements to it. A reporter, a courier journal carried a story of a journalist observing in the Black Panthers organization uh, the synthesizing of hashish from marijuana. Uh, the plaintiff was subpoenaed by the Jefferson County Grand jury, he appeared but refused to identify his sources. The state trial judge ordered the plaintiff to answer these questions and rejected the contention that the Kentucky reporters privileged the shield law. The First Amendment of the United States Constitution, the Eighth Amendment of the Kentucky Constitution authorized his refusal to answer. 
Plaintiffs then sought a prohibition and writ of mandamus, but the Kentucky Court of Appeals denied the petition. The second aspect of Brandsburg v. Hayes had to do with the reporter seeing in the Black Panther organization smoking, had seen some of them smoking marijuana. Long story short, the United Supreme Court upheld the case uh, now known as Brandsburg v. Hayes and used that case when Judith Miller when Judith Miller was subpoenaed by the federal grand jury to testify during the investigation over the leak of a CIA agent Valerie Plame's identity to several news outlets you may recall that Valerie Plame was a CIA operative in Iraq whose mission evidently was to evaluate the aluminum being imported into Iraq for nuclear weaponry. Miller refused to comply with the subpoena, ordering her to reveal the confidential source who identified Valerie Plame as a CIA agent. Subsequent news stories had indicated the source allegedly to be Scooter Libby or Karl Rove from the Bush, W. Bush White House. Miller moved to quash the order on the First Amendment and common law grounds. The federal court disagreed with her claims and found her in contempt of court. Miller appealed to the circuit court, which upheld the lower court, citing Brandsburg v. Hayes, the circuit court of the appeals, reached the following conclusion. The Supreme Court decided in Brandsburg that there is no First Amendment privilege protecting journalists from appearing before a grand jury or from testifying before a grand jury or otherwise providing evidence to a grand jury regardless of any confidential promised by the reporter to any source. The highest court has spoken and never revisited the question without doubt. That is the end of the matter, end quote. Judith Miller was jailed for 85 days and was only released after agreeing to divulge the name of the confidential source. This was a matter of national security. Again, my recommendation is a Senate draft one, embodying the recommendations of the state attorney general, the American Civil Liberties Union, and the <coughs> Judiciary Committee on Rules of Evidence. If there's no further discussion, Further discussion, Mr. Chair? Not to beat a dead journalist, uh, but um, the examples you gave uh, involved crimes. Is it not true that our law currently does not uh, allow any immunity or shield for any journalist who witnesses a crime? They are still compelled to give testimony if we're talking about a crime? Just for clarification. It will when we pass this bill. No, I'm, I'm saying current law. Well, Does not the current law I, I don't already know. do that? I, I don't know. Why don't you tell us? I, I'm, I'm asking you, sir. Well, I don't know. Well, we any further discussion? No, but this is for us to decide. You have any further discussion? You've talked a lot, but do you have any further discussion? We're ready to vote. Fine. Thank you. Just one. Go ahead. I'll be voting <clears throat> with reservations in hopes that the conference committee um, will um, um, be able to come to agreement with the House in um, repealing the sunset date and limiting as much as possible the amendments. Um, so I'll be voting with reservations okay. in favor. Fair enough. Any further discussion? If not, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Gabbard? Aye. Senator Ihara? With reservations? Senator Sloan? Reservations. Thank you. Members, this meeting is, is over. Thank you.